Take a second to think about this. What do you reckon? How many podcasters lose more money with their content than they make? I'm going to give you a hint. It's not 50, not 70, not 90, but a staggering 99%. Hey, everybody. My name is Moritz. I am the co-founder of Conchex, and we will be the driving force to help podcasters change this number drastically. Now, to understand why so many podcasters lose money, let me introduce Peter the Podcaster to you. Peter hosts a comedy podcast for which he produces and releases one episode per week. And for the podcast medium, he has gained a respectable listenership of around 500 listeners per episode. Now, Peter's problem is that he has built up some expenses for equipment, software for editing, recording, post-production, and so on. But on the other side of the balance sheet, there is a big zero euro income. So Peter does what any reasonable human being would do, goes online and searches how he can at least make some money back to pay his expenses. But unfortunately, he quickly comes to the realization that there is simply no viable option right now to do that. The most suggested option, sponsorships and ads, only works for a handful of very, very large podcasters. Donations sound cool, but are either super inconvenient to use, take high fees, or have ridiculous minimum amounts of five euros and above. And then there is premium content subscriptions like Patreon, for which Peter would need to convince his audience to pay him a monthly rate for content he is yet to produce. So you could be thinking, okay, maybe there's just no money in this industry. But that's actually not the case. The podcasting industry is prospering and projected to continue growing massively, but just not to the advantage of the creators. And there's a reason for that. Contrary to what many believed, Spotify, for example, is not the YouTube of podcasting, simply because podcasters don't actually upload their content to Spotify. Instead, we have a very decentralized landscape of podcast hosts and listening apps, and as a result, a lot of the money that is in the industry never arrives in the pocket of the podcasters. And this is where we come in. We at Conchex will help podcasters change this and make sure they actually get a piece of that cake by creating community-focused monetization tools for both donations and premium content that actually work and make sense. And starting off with donations, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the Value for Value ecosystem, which technically speaking enables in-app lightning-based donations that go directly from the listener to the podcaster. And we have made it our mission to supercharge the ecosystem by doing two things. First, as you can see here on the right, we have made it so easy to get your podcast value for value ready, a child could do it. Even including creating a new Lightning Wallet, it only takes 65 seconds to do everything you need to get your podcast ready to receive value for value donations. And the second thing we are doing is we also help podcasters maximize this ecosystem by providing them with guidance on how to use it properly and giving them useful insights about the community and donations in our podcaster dashboard. Now, regarding premium content, we were not that fortunate because there was no good idea already being worked on that we can supercharge and scale. So instead, we stuck our heads together with our friends at LV and created a completely new lightning-based protocol that will change how we will consume premium content in the future. And while we are finalizing the API and podcast dashboard for that, I have brought you a demo here that shows how our solution works from a listener's perspective. So forget about requiring external services like Patreon. Our premium content will be visible and accessible directly in the podcast player in its public podcast feed. And you can do cool things like offer a trailer or the first 5, 10, 15 minutes of your content for free and then let the listener pay for and access the content directly when and where he wants it, which is in the podcast player while listening to the content. And for both of these solutions, we firmly believe that we can help podcasters create significant income. So instead of charging a monthly fee or anything like that for our services, we participate in the success we help podcasters create in form of transaction fees. And to validate that I'm not only telling you that we are building great solutions here, but that we are actually doing that, I have brought some voices from customers here. And the first is Tomek. I don't know if you can see that. 
a podcaster that onboarded with us just last week and was kind enough to praise us on Twitter on how smooth that whole process was. And second, we have a name. We have a name that might be familiar, Adam Curry, the co-founder of both the original podcasting protocol and Value for Value, that put it a little more straightforward and said, holy crap, this is useful. Now, the Lightning Network is not only useful, but actually essential for what we are achieving. Because without getting into too much into how podcasting works, getting content out to the listener is actually easy. In the end, there is some MP3 file stored on a web server somewhere and a podcast listening app that requests it. But if a listener wants to send back money to a podcaster, if he tries to do that using the inter inefficient intermediaries we have today, they cannot only decide to stop the money or freeze the money at any given point in time, they also take very high fees, especially for smaller amounts. So if you take these 10 cents here, for example, and a listener tries to send that to a podcaster using Patreon, PayPal, or Visa, the podcaster will be lucky to even receive three cents, a whopping 30% of the original amount. And with Lightning, we can make transferring money as easy as listening to a podcast episode because the Lightning Network allows us to create a direct and efficient connection between the podcaster and the listener. And while Lightning is essential for us, we also firmly believe that we bring great value to the Bitcoin ecosystem. Because as Roy Scheinfeld, the CEO of Breeze, recently put it, we need more apps with Lightning, not more Lightning apps. And we feed right into that by building tools with Lightning that are relevant for every podcaster on the planet. And of course, it would be a little conceited to think that we can take the world by our own. So a big focus of us in the last year was to build a unique skill set in the industry in the intersection of content creation and content monetization using Lightning, and then build strong partnerships on both sides. And we were successful in doing that with Albi as a Lightning wallet provider and the Podcast Index as a leading podcast aggregator. And I'm very proud to say we were only able to get to this point today because we have a great team with a strong IT background from both the Technical University of Munich and years of practical experience in the industry. We have a team full of complementary skill set and we are all full-time committed to this company and project. And as proud as I am where we got today, I'm even more excited about what's next. Because the problems I just described are not exclusive to the podcasting industry. Instead, quite the opposite is the case, actually. We have creators across all platforms struggling to monetize their content because we live in a world today where not the creator with the best content is rewarded, but the creator with the most attention. And by creating community-focused tools that actually work and can scale, we give power back to the creators because 50 loyal supporters will be more valuable than a thousand anonymous faces that clicked on a piece of content once. So we will not only be able to help podcasters monetize their content, we will actually build the power tools for all creators in a Lightning and Bitcoin-enabled web. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> so um, I'm a little confused. That was a great presentation, by the way. That was awesome. But is this an alternative to something like Fountain? Does this compete right alongside with it? Or is this something that competes with like something like Anchor? Okay, as far as the, the, the podcasting tools? Or is this a player? I'm just a little confused yeah. on how to use this. So... The comparison would be that we are a competition to something like Patreon. Fountain is more a complementary service that mainly targets the listener side, and we mainly target the creator side, but we are an additional monetization service, a podcast that you could use independent of whether they use Anchor or whether the listeners use Fountain. So we are a layer above that on the monetization side. So compare it to maybe Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, some service like that. So then from the listener side of it, yeah. after a podcaster uh, creates and it links his podcast, how then is that discoverable? How, how does he then start receiving funds? So in the end, the content will be available in the apps. So that's why we are building partnerships with the apps. Our solutions work in an ecosystem, not by our own. So we are not building a platform where we need to draw both listeners and podcasters but we help podcasters onboard into these cool things like value for value 
and then the listeners can use Pocket Cast, Fountain, or whatever, and for example, use value for value. And similar, we have chosen to do a similar approach with the premium content solution. So the whole thing we built is very easy to implement for listeners. So we have spoken to, for example, the lights of the, the names you, you know of the value for value ecosystem, Breeze, Fountain. We also spoke to Pocket Casts about it. In the end, the listeners will be able to use their regular apps. That's the goal. It sounds like uh, your target uh, audience is uh, average podcasters that uh, usually struggle to, to monetize. Yeah. So why would you grow sustainably if these podcasters, they are not sustainable themselves? So for example, they can try um, podcast for a couple of months and they just go out of business. Can you repeat the middle part? It's quite, I don't know. Can you speak a little louder, please? It was hard to understand the question, sorry. Small podcasters will go out of business. Yeah. Why do you grow sustainably uh, if you work with the small podcasters? So I think a misconception there is that not only small con podcasters struggle to make money, but like 95%. So even if you have 1,000, 2,000 listeners on average, and you have a strong community, it's still very hard because the right tools are missing. So not only people with five listeners struggle to monetize, but also medium ones. Um, can you, what, was that an answer to that question? No, I'm not sure I understood that correctly. Why onboarding these podcasters will pay off your efforts? Because they're, they're not generating a lot of revenue. I don't know if I'm standing strong. Maybe you, you can move a little bit. It's super hard to stand that, okay. understand that. Let's take it offline. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think maybe the question could be generalized in like, do you think that they're not making money because they don't have the right tools? Or maybe it's because there's just no money to be made in that business? Okay, now I understood the question. Yes, if you compare or if you look at platforms that have had some success in building that, like Patreon, it is pretty obvious that listeners are ready to support if there's something for them in it. So if it's the right situation, there for sure is enough people to support creators. But it has to be the right situation. And the weakness, for example, of Patreon is that it's a super high commitment for both a creator and a listener to create like a closed ecosystem with additional content. So we believe that if you open this, for example, with premium content that is easily accessible, there is a much bigger audience that is actually willing to pay money if we provide the right tools and the right situation, yes. What is, your, what is your strategy on building the organization, building the team and fundraising in the next couple of years? I'm sorry, you have to repeat. No worries. So what is your strategy on team building, organization building and fundraising in the next couple of years? How do you want to make this really big? So, I don't know, I can go to the, Back to the team slide if I can. Yeah, perfect. So we have had a very strong core in what we are good at technically in the Lightning Network. And I believe we have built a great product and great stuff. But the strategy would be to take this now and add the pieces that are missing. For example, for us, would be great to get marketing and sales additions and then go from there. So the first people that I would, I would sign are marketing, sales, and then an additional developer. And we are looking to make that happen throughout this year with the first raising round, yes. What investors are you tackling there and what amount are you looking for? So we are just in the process of starting this, but ideally, as we did with our partners, it would be awesome if, the, if it's a VC, is strong on either one of the business sites we need, so either in the Lightning community or Bitcoin community that can help us for connect us with the right people, legal stuff, whatever, or in the creator economy or creator community, it would also be very helpful to have additional support there because as I said, we do not only want to stick to podcasting, and of course it would be great if a investing company would, would provide some, some know-how and skill set there. 
what is your go to market? Are your salespeople going to cold call uh, podcasters and onboard them one by one uh, using a human salesperson? I think in the beginning, because we have outside of the Bitcoin bubble still some track or some friction to onboard, I think in the beginning this will be for the first hundreds, thousands of podcasters approach we, we have to take that we can really help the podcasters onboard, yes. The question uh, from my side, uh, what I'm trying to understand if I'm a podcaster on Spotify and mm -hmm. I would like to receive lightning uh, rewards from donations or whatever from my uh, listeners, do I need Spotify to integrate any infrastructure for that? Do you need uh, permission for Spotify to, for the podcasters to receive these uh, lightning uh, donations or is it uh, how, yeah? No, so if you have a Anchor or now Spotify for Creators podcast, you can easily use us and onboard into this value for value ecosystem without any problem. Of course, right now, Spotify is, is not supporting value for value in the next few months. But even if you're committed to Spotify, there is no problem in receiving lightning donations from all the other apps that, that support it. And the second thing that we do is um, this weekend, we are launching a small boost service, not, not, not really a small, a boost service or donation service feature on our website. So also people that would like to give something back but hate leaving Spotify have an, an intermediary way that they can take the route of going to a website and support if they don't want to switch apps in the long run. So that's the two. Uh, what's the revenue, like what's the rev share model on every SAT uh, that comes in? So we uh, are finalizing what percentage that will be exactly, but we are taking from four to eight percent on donations and premium content that podcasters sell or receive through by when using our services. There's time for one more quick question. Yeah, so I understand it that, uh, that there's lightning on the consumer side. What about on the producer side? So can the producer choose to receive lightning or fiat or both? So right now it is lightning only. Of course, it's a, 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 a good question if we in the short or medium term introduce something like MoonPay and connect it with Albi so that podcasters have the choice to easily get out of lightning if they want to. But right now it's lightning only. And on the consumer side, do you have any plans? Maybe, you know, if a producer wants to receive Bitcoin, but the consumer doesn't have any? So, again, right now only Lightning, but we are following very, very eagerly what, for example, Striga is doing, because it would be possible to have a fiat in Bitcoin out swap on the way if, if they and their services are ready. So, right now Lightning, but there are a lot of options on the table in the medium run so that also people who don't want to use Bitcoin for whatever reason and will never use Bitcoin can support the podcast. All right. Uh, please give them another round of applause. Thank you.